Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I'm your host, Brianna Wilson. I'm a certified dementia practitioner and the founder of Bamboo Care. So today we're going to be talking about the seven A's of dementia, which are amnesia, altered perception, anosognosia, agnosia, apraxia, aphasia, and apathy. But before we get into today's topic, I do have two quick announcements. So the first announcement is super exciting. The With Intent Masterclass is officially live. So that means when you enroll, you will get immediate access to all course content. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, the With Intent Masterclass is a nine-module interactive self-paced course. If you're concerned that you won't have enough time to dedicate to the course, no worries. I get it. And I kept all that in mind when creating the course. We tried our darndest to cut the fluff and get straight to the point. Your time is valuable, and it's important that you get the information you need in a digestible, easy-to-understand way, right? Now, if you want to learn more about the masterclass or enroll, I'm going to leave the link letsbamboo.com slash masterclass in the podcast notes. But in short, through the masterclass, you will gain a better understanding of dementia, learn how to effectively navigate challenging behaviors, and learn how to better care for your partner, all while caring for yourself too. I can promise you, even if you've taken another dementia course before, this course is nothing like you've experienced, and it's even more awesome because, well, it's taught by me. But besides that, you will get lifetime access to all the course content and any updates that I make, special access to the digital version of the With Intent book, additional topic coverage beyond book content, printables and handouts, which there are several, additional resources, and private Panda Care Champion community membership, which is where you can connect with other caregivers who are going through the course and ask me your questions. So I really do hope to see some of our listeners join us in the With Intent Masterclass. At this time, it is only available to those in U.S., Canada, and Australia. Yes, I just found out that we can now offer the Masterclass to those in Australia too, which is excellent news. Now, if you're in another country, I have not forgotten about you, okay? We're working on it. We have listeners in about 71 different countries now. So if you want to make sure that your country is on our radar for future expansion, then please shoot me an email at hello at letsbamboo.com and just say, hey, Brianna, I'm in this country. I would love to take your master class and I'll make note of it, okay? The second announcement is that September freebies were released as promised about a week and a half ago. We released a weekly meal planner and an adaptive tools for eating e-packet. Now, it's important that I clarify that our free resources are available to anyone in the world. So no matter where you're located, you have access to our free resources and to our free dementia care support community, okay? So if that's been a hesitation of yours, no worries. The free resources and the free support community are both accessible to you, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the topic, the seven A's of dementia. So first, it's important to let you know that with medical-based terms, an A as a prefix often means to be without or to have a loss of. So all of these terms will be referring to the loss of something, okay? Now, just as a heads up, many of these terms actually have many different types. And if I were to go through every single type, I'd be here all day. And you'd probably stop listening at some point, okay? So my goal here is to give you the highlights, the gist of what you need to understand as a dementia care partner, okay? So first, let's talk about amnesia, which we have talked about before on the podcast before, and so I'll be sure to link it in the podcast notes, okay? But in its most basic definition, amnesia is memory loss. This can include memory loss of events and facts and even procedural memory, which is knowledge of how to do things like walking, driving, and even reading. Now, in most cases, amnesia is temporary, but when amnesia is present with dementia, it is not. So what makes it a little confusing is that dementia can cause amnesia, okay? So simply put, dementia can cause memory loss. 
The memory loss aspect of dementia is what is referred to as amnesia. But as we know, dementia is so much more than memory loss, right? Next is altered perception, which is basically referring to misperceptions of the environment, misinterpretation of information received from the senses. So with this, a glare could look like water. A black mat could look like a hole on the floor. A person may think bath water is super deep when it's really not. They may think a coat hanger in the corner is a person, or a laundry basket is a small child. They may think patterns on a plate are bugs. Shadows can look like creepy things. Or they may even try to sit on the floor if they can't tell where a chair or couch begins or ends. Now, most of these examples that I gave were visual, but there can be misperceptions with any of the senses, and these misperceptions can also be the root of a lot of anxiety, paranoia, delusions, and even hallucinations. This is why you always hear me emphasize contrast, 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 choosing solid colors over patterns, to ditch the black or dark colored mats, to reduce overall clutter, close the blinds in the evening to help reduce shadows and creepy things out the window, turn off TVs in unoccupied rooms. We want to make adjustments in the environment to reduce potential misperceptions. We want our partner to both be safe and feel safe, okay? Now next is anisognosia, and we've actually talked about this term before too on our podcast, so I'll be sure to link that in the podcast notes as well. But anisognosia is a lack of insight into one's deficits. So if a person living with dementia has anisognosia, then they are unaware of their condition and deficits. So to us, it may look a lot like denial, right? Because it just seems like they are refusing to acknowledge their problems. But that's not what's happening at all. They literally do not believe anything is wrong because they have no knowledge that anything is wrong. For this reason, it's often pointless and can actually be damaging to the relationship if you are constantly pointing out their deficits and difficulties or keep trying to remind them that they have dementia. You are fighting a losing battle because to them, everything is fine and you aren't going to be able to convince them otherwise, okay? Next up is agnosia. Now, this is the loss of ability to recognize once familiar stimuli like people objects, sounds, or even smells using the senses. So if you were to ask them what something was or who someone was, they wouldn't be able to accurately tell you. And this goes beyond just forgetting the name of something or someone. So if you were to ask them to point to the lamp, they would point inaccurately. They may tell you that they don't know, or they might point to something like a fan. If you were to ask them to describe what something was or does, they wouldn't be able to give you an accurate description nor demonstration either. And so this is pretty much like complete non-recognition. However, I will say that people may do better with actual objects versus pictures, okay? So for example, if I show a picture of a pretzel, the person may name it as a worm. But if I were to show them an actual pretzel in real life, they may be able to recognize it and tell me that it's a pretzel. But that all depends, okay? But the point is that this can cause a lot of confusion and odd behaviors because many things can be perceived as unrecognizable or be recognized as something else. So they may now think a friend or family member is an imposter, or they may make gestures towards someone they think is their significant other. They may try to eat a bar of soap. They may try to drink Listerine or a cleaning product. They may try to use a fork to comb their hair, things like that. So for this reason, it's very important to introduce yourself if your partner doesn't recognize you, keep dangerous items locked away, only keep what's necessary in your partner's reach and sight, label commonly used objects if your partner can still read, and demonstrate how to use something if necessary, okay? Then we have apraxia, which is loss of motor skills. It's a motor planning and sequencing issue. It's a coordination of movement issue. Now there's a lot of different types of apraxias and it can get really convoluted and confusing. So to simplify it, 
sometimes this can be a, I know what I want to do, but I can't get my body to do it. Either I don't know how to do it in the right order. I can't do it the way I'm telling my body to do it. It's like my body's not listening or I just can't get my body to do it at all type of thing. And then sometimes this is a, I don't even know what to do or where to begin type of thing. So what you may see is the person unable to bring their utensil to their mouth to eat. You may see the person putting clothes on in an odd order. They may try to put toothpaste on the toothbrush without removing the cap. They may perseverate on a task and have difficulty stopping. So like with brushing their teeth, they may accidentally pee first and then pull their clothes down to sit on the toilet. They may have a difficult time manipulating buttons, things like that. Basically, anything that requires multiple steps or increased coordination is going to be very difficult. And this even extends to speech. To be able to produce speech, we have to be able to coordinate and sequence mouth movements in a particular way, right? And so if a person has apraxia of speech, then speaking properly is going to be very difficult. Now, speaking of speech and things, next we have aphasia. Aphasia is loss of language skills, including the ability to speak, understand, read, or write. Again, there are different types of aphasia. So the type of aphasia a person has will influence their language and comprehension abilities. So sometimes they just have issues with word finding or naming objects. Sometimes they will be able to speak really well and effortlessly, but their sentences don't make a whole lot of sense. And they don't actually comprehend what you're saying too well either. And then sometimes they can understand you just fine, but their ability to communicate is severely impaired and their speech can be broken up. So the point is with aphasia, there's going to be some sort of communication difficulty, okay? Now last up is apathy, which is another one that I did a whole episode on, okay? And again, I'll link that in the podcast notes. But with apathy, the person has a loss of interest and motivation to participate in once enjoyable things. Really, they're kind of just indifferent about it. Now, this is much different than depression. This lack of interest is not due to sadness. Much of this has to do with an impairment in voluntary action or goal-oriented behavior. As dementia progresses, a person often loses their ability to initiate goal-oriented tasks, So you may assume that because your partner is sitting in the same place all day, doing nothing but watching TV or letting the TV watch them, that they just don't want to do anything. But that may not necessarily be the case. They may just be sitting there because they don't know what else they could be doing. So that's where you come in, to be the one to provide them with the opportunities to do things, either by themselves with some setup or with you. So like I said, I have done episodes that have dug a little deeper into some of these topics, and if you're interested and haven't tuned in already, I will link them down below for your enjoyment, okay? Now it's important to note that with these seven A's, all seven A's may not be present in a particular person with dementia, but these are common symptoms that we see, and so that's why I wanted to share them, okay? So like I always say, I really do hope that you found this podcast episode interesting and informative. Don't forget to join us in the With Intent Masterclass at letsbamboo.com slash masterclass. Also, feel free to join Bamboo Care's free support community, Bamboo Care Champions at letsbamboo.com slash champions. If anyone has questions, comments, or future podcast requests, you can send us an email at podcast at whatthedementia.com. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care, and until next time, stay strong, care on, and remember, you are not alone. Bamboo Care is always here.